$5,000, it seems like an incredible deal, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't care who you are, you should never, ever, ever buy one of these. Well, there's, there's a spring in it. One of the most legendary sports SUVs ever assembled and one of the first sports SUVs that pioneered this segment, the BMW 4.6 IS. Now, if you've watched Hoovy's Garage about a year ago, you'll know that he ended up purchasing a very neglected first gen X5 and he basically gave a very explicit warning to not buy a cheap first gen X5. And that's because they're gonna need a lot of work and the maintenance in some ways can be very expensive. And quite honestly, I do agree with him. So in today's video, we're gonna explore just how well this cheap 4.6 IS has held up, and we're gonna go over everything that's gone wrong with it in the past year. Then we're gonna take it for a drive, we'll review it and see just how much of a legend this 4.6 IS truly is, and whether or not you should buy one. Now, one of my relatives purchased this 4.6 IS just over a year ago when the pandemic started for an absolute bargain. And when I heard the purchase price, I honestly couldn't believe it because other than a few minor body imperfections, this car was mechanically flawless at the time. So when they asked me to make a review on it a year ago, I said, let's wait, maybe a year or so and see how it holds up because I think the viewers would like to know how a cheap BMW Performance X5 can hold up, especially after what Hoovy's Garage said. So here we are just over a year later and the car has held up very well. It hasn't needed any major maintenance and it appears to be in good condition. The only warning light that had popped up was the check brake lining message which indicated the front brakes were getting worn down and needed to be replaced. So we ordered a brake kit from FCP Euro and decided to do that ourselves. And just as we thought the brake job was going to be doable and the maintenance on this car was going to be a breeze, one of the caliper bolts was absolutely seized. So after doing everything we could to get it out, we ended up stripping the bolt. And at that point, it was clear we were going to need our mechanic's help. And just as that got sorted and I was about to make this video, well, let's just say it needed a tow back to Orion's because the starter motor failed.
So other than the front brakes and the starter motor, the car hasn't needed any other maintenance in the last year of regular driving other than an oil change. And that's pretty impressive for a cheap old Performance X5. I'll also make an additional video of fixing up this car. Anyways, let's take a tour of this X5 and then go for a drive. So starting off with the exterior, there isn't really much to complain about the E53 body style. And it really shows that this car came from a time when BMW was making some of the most elegant yet sporty cars on the road. The 4.6 IS features a few special touches compared to the standard E53. You get the flared fenders and a body color bumper at the front and you get square exhaust tips and the body colored bumper at the rear. You also get a little 4.6 IS badge on the side. So apart from that, there's not too much that differentiates this from the standard E53 X5, but the differences are explicit enough to know that this is a level above the standard X5. There are a few imperfections on the body of this X5, but overall there's no huge dents or any other substantial damage. You're also probably wondering about those ugly black wheels and how much of an eyesore they are. When the current owner bought this car, it did come with these style 87 wheels that the 4.6 IS is normally equipped with. However, the tires on those style 87s are a little bald. The style 87s are 20 inch wheels that require 315s in the rear and 275s in the front, which is a decent amount of rubber. Here in Canada, big tires like that can get quite expensive, so what people do is they drive across the border and get tires in the US at a cheaper price. Given that the border is currently closed for non-essential travel, these smaller tires and wheels will be used for the time being. Alright, so moving on to the engine, this is perhaps the best part of the 4.6 IS and what makes it so special. Under the hood we've got the M62 TU B46 V8, a naturally aspirated 4.6 liter V8 that BMW had at the time. Now there are a lot of rumors about this engine and some say that Alpina even produced it. I cannot confirm or deny this but I do not believe that to be the case. Instead, it is believed that BMW and Alpina collaborated on this engine, but it was ultimately an Alpina design and BMW produced this design at their own factory. The stroke and bore was increased from 4.4 liters to 4.6 liters at the time to give more power, along with different pistons, cams, and stronger valve springs compared to the M62 V8. The Alpina cars that did get this motor, like the V10 V8, received cylinder heads that were ported and polished in the Alpina assembly line. However, the 4.6 IS did not receive this as BMW did not port and polish the heads on their assembly line for this engine. Again, this is all speculative since I read this info on online forums, so I cannot confirm or deny this. However, what I do know is that this engine is an absolute gem and much rarer than the 4.4i. It makes 340 horsepower and 350 foot-pounds of torque, which is very solid and quite impressive for the early 2000s. This car also sounds absolutely ferocious. This specific 4.6 IS has an X-pipe welded on by the previous owner, which really wakes this V8 up. Stepping inside the interior, it's a very nice place to be, and this specific model has held up very well over the last 17 years. The leather on the seats is in surprisingly good condition, and the seat bolsters seem to have held up pretty well. Overall, there is a lot of switch gear that's shared with other models, like the E38 and the E39 of this era, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I also like the black plastics and the silver trim that they used, along with the black headliner, which I believe is exclusive to the X5s of this era that had the sport package. 
The interior, in my opinion, has also aged really well and it doesn't look too outdated. It feels modern enough, but it still offers some old school features that are missing in today's interiors, like a physical parking brake or actual buttons instead of navigating through a touchscreen. These late 90s, early 2000s interiors have a bad reputation when it comes to cheap plastics, but as long as the interior hasn't been aggressively used, then it should hold up. The highlights of this interior include the black leather sports seats up front, as they are really comfortable yet supportive and give you decent adjustability. You also get the gauge cluster from the E39 M5 with the adjustable red line and the oil temperature indicator, which looks fantastic and, in my opinion, probably one of the best gauge clusters ever made. And finally, the clamshell tailgate is very neat. There's not too many cons when it comes to this interior. Again, there are some things that have a tendency to fail, and that includes fading pixels, which is a common issue in BMWs of this era, and these pixels in the binnacle are beginning to fail. Anyways, let's take it for a drive. All right, so here we are driving the 4.6 IS. <laughs> oh man, this thing sounds so good. So if you've driven other BMWs of this era, like the E46 or the E39, then you're gonna find this 4.6 IS to give you a very welcoming driving experience. Like those other cars I mentioned, it's driver orientated and it offers you really good driving ergonomics when you wanna have you know a sportier feel to your drive. And this E53 X5, was very pioneering when it came to SUVs being more user-friendly in a sense and giving you a more sporty drive. And you can really feel that in this 4.6 IS. Now I have to say that BMW did a fantastic job on how this 4.6 IS drives. And it really does offer you a good combination of sportiness and comfort. Now up front you get conventional mechanical struts and in the rear you get air suspension. And those two combined for an overall acceptable driving experience when it comes to your day-to-day -day routines. But keep in mind, it is a little bit on the stiffer side, but by no means is it harsh, nor will it crash over the bumps. But what you're gonna find that is that this X5, it handles really well considering its size and its age. And right now, when I drive currently in the twisties, this hydraulic steering has a really nice way to it and it is giving me pretty decent feedback. And you are gonna be pleasantly surprised at how stable this 4.6 IS is in the corners. Now, one of the best parts about driving this 4.6 IS is the acceleration. And it is just such a treat to listen to that exhaust note. In fact, if I put it in manual mode, put it into second gear, Man, it is just such a treat to listen to that V8. That is really amazing. Um, it has this really nice low end grunt to it. And then when you get into the higher RPMs, it really begins to have that higher exotic rasp. similar to the uh, S62 V8 in the E39 M5 when it gets into the higher RPMs. Now this uh, 4.6 liter naturally aspirated V8 does offer you uh, some really decent low end torque and it's overall a pretty quick engine. Now it's by no means as fast as today's uh, modern sports SUVs but it's no slouch either. This is a really decently powerful engine. Now if you like driving this 4.6 IS and hearing that exhaust note, that is unfortunately going to cost you at the pump because the fuel economy on these 4.6 ISs are not the best. I've spoken to the owner about this and if you drive it uh, on the highway conservatively, you can get 10 to 11 kilometers, sorry, 10 to 11 liters per 100 kilometers, which is fairly decent. but 
where your fuel economy is not the best is in the city and there you're probably going to get around 15 to 17 liters per 100 kilometers depending on how much you like to accelerate at red lights and one of the reasons why the fuel economy is you know not supposedly the best on this SUV is because the 4.6 liter V8 under the hood has single vanos and also because you have a ZF 5 speed automatic transmission which don't get me wrong the ZF it's a decent transmission it's good at handling the power but having that you know extra ratio to keep the RPMs a little bit lower especially when you're cruising at highway speeds can definitely help with your fuel economy thankfully though the 4.8 IS that succeeds the 4.6 does mitigate these two issues with the N62 having a more uh, updated Vano system and also having the six-speed ZF. Overall, if I were to summarize the driving experience in the 4.6 IS, I would say that it's a fairly practical sports activity vehicle that offers you pretty decent character and it's really reminiscent in some ways of the M cars that BMW made in this period. Now, bear in mind that even though this is a bigger car and people may look at it as an SUV, it's by no means the best at off-roading, nor is it intended for that. Um, it does have some features for off-roading. For instance, you get downhill assist control and probably some other features given that this SUV was constructed during the period of the BMW uh, Land Rover marriage. But that's not really what segment uh, the X5 was going after at the time. However, if you're really interested in E53s and off-roading, then if you get maybe the, the three liter with the six-speed manual and slap some pretty big tires on there, then I've heard that can be quite a capable off-roader. So overall, if you consider this vehicle for what it is, and especially consider that it's from 2003, then I'm gonna say that you're gonna be really pleasantly surprised with the way it drives. Well, everyone, there you have it. That's an overview of this BMW 4.6 IS. Now, the main question is whether or not you should own one, and that really depends on how enthusiastic you are about these BMW X5s. These cars require consistent maintenance, and preventative maintenance is definitely key if you plan on daily driving one of these 4.6 ISs. However, as the saying goes, if you take care of your car, it will take care of you. And that's exactly how I would describe owning the 4.6 IS. Now, if you're looking for a cheap SUV that can handle your day-to-day -day routines, I wouldn't recommend a 4.6 IS. The 4.6 IS is more for BMW enthusiasts who appreciate cars like the E46 M3 and the E39 M5 and want something in SUV form that offers a similar character to those M cars I just talked about. So if you like this BMW 4.6 IS, stay tuned to our channel because I'll be making a few more videos about it and the ownership experience. And also let me know in the comments below if there's any specific video you would like me to make about this 4.6 IS. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Please, it helps us a lot if you like this video, if you make a comment, if you share, and also follow us on Instagram if you wanna see the latest updates on our cars that we're filming. So as always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.